Thank you very much, Udayji, for your very generous words. First of all, I would like to thank Uday Balakrishnanji for inviting me to this prestigious institution, which is the best in the field of science in India. I really feel honored and privileged to be in this great institution among the great scholars who are present here today. So thank you so much, Udayji, for giving me this opportunity to be here. And I'm thankful to Bitasta, who has made all the arrangements, where is he? All the arrangements for my arrival, my stay, and all the, all the finer details. So she has worked very hard to work this out. So thank you very much. And of course, Dr. Raghavendra Gadkar, who is a great scientist of India, who is not with us today because he is traveling in US for some uh, conferences. But uh, I believe he is uh, one of the best in the world in the field of biosciences. And I'm happy that his wife is here. She is representing him today. So thank you very much uh, for organizing this. Please convey my thanks to uh, Professor Saab when he comes back. Thank you. And I'm thankful to all of you for coming this evening, this afternoon. Uh, I'm no, I know that it's, uh, you all have busy, you have busy schedules, but I'm happy that you could find time to come here to listen to me this afternoon. So thank you very much. First, I'll speak very briefly on uh, science and spirituality, which is one of the topics covered in, in the book. Now, what do we mean science? What do we mean by spirituality? I think these are the issues which we, we will get into some brief detail. What is science? Science is primarily to ascertain the truth or the reality. For example, you analyze a substance to find out what is the composition of the substance. You observe a planet to decide what it is consisted of, how it operates, how it works. You observe movement of, uh, for example, Earth, or you analyze uh, the magnetic uh, field around the Earth, all to decide how it functions, what is the reality, what is the truth, what are uh, the factors determining all this. So this is what uh, science is basically. Uh, this is the picture also on the mm, cover of my book. Uh, because uh, it is believed in the modern way that real modern science started in the 16th, 17th century, uh, when the Galileo was uh, one of the uh, foremost scient scientists. Because before that, there were various theories which were uh, invalidated by him and his successors. So I'll come back to those a little later. But these are the methods of science. You see how we, uh, there are laboratories, there are observatories, and then you go into the details. Uh, you send these spacecrafts, you send various uh, kinds of rays in the, in the space to decide what is what. Now the problem, I'm not getting into the details because the time is short, so I will confine the three different topics. So the, the fact, one most important point which I would like to mention here is that the modern science is not being able to stable in its theories. If you read every two years, the theories change. There was a time when Earth was supposed to be only 6,000 years old, and now it has become 4.3 billion years old. See the difference. And it is, it is within a span of two, 300 years, the whole theories have changed. Not only that, this, the Earth was supposed to be flat, and the Sun was supposed to be revolving around the Earth. There were many other theories. We also have the Darwin's, con, uh, you know, the, what we call it, theory of evolution. So all those theories have undergone change over a period of time. So there is no, it only proves there is no stability about these theories. As the new knowledge comes, these theories are invalidated by the new knowledge and new things are established. Why this happens? This is the question, because today what we understand in science, those theories will be invalidated definitely in the next few decades. You will see in your lifetime, the theories which have been propounded today, which are considered the hallmark of science, will no longer be valid after a few decades from today. Why? This is the most important question. Now you see the foundation of all scientific experiments is our sense organs. We have five sense organs, which are organs of perception. Hmm? You have the ears to hear. You have the touch, which is 
sense of touch. You have the eyesight, which is the, the organ of sight. Then you have smell and taste. These five organs are the basis of deciding everything in the science. I can touch this, I can feel this, so this exists. Hmm? You can observe the movement of a planet, you can decide what is happening, you can take photographs, you can work it out. So everything is based on sense observation. If you cannot have a laboratory test, if you cannot observe things, the thing cannot be experimented by the scientific methods as they exist today. And this is the biggest limitation of science. Because firstly the power of sense, our sense is, is very, very poor. You see, these sense organs do not give you a reliable input. For example, take the example of sense of smell. A dog has much better sense of smell than we do. He can follow you for kilometers. We can't even feel the, the sense of smell. Don't you realize? As soon as the sun goes down, you can't see what happens to your eyes. Eh? And what about a child's sense of perception? A child doesn't realize what is what. His perception is very different. Your perception is very different. As you grow old, your perception will change again. So the perception changes with age, perception changes with experience, and moreover, perception changes with the state of your mind. If you are in a happy mood, you feel, oh, this is a great place I'm very. And if you are in the same place, if you are not in a great mood, then you feel this no good. Why am I am here. So the perception is a subjective thing. Like if you see this boat from a nearby, you find it's very large. You see it from a distance, you'll find it's very small. Hmm? The distance makes change your perception. Fog, for example, the fog envelops a city, you don't see anything. It doesn't mean that nothing exists. So the things exist as they are, but you cannot see them because your sense organs are not powerful enough to see them. You see, this is the mood. If you are happy, you feel everything is good. If you are not happy, it's the state of mind which determines your perception there. If the light goes off, you see a different city. When there's a sun, sunlight, you see a different city. In the evening, you see a different city. Yeah, around 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the night, you see a different city. Same thing changes. This is the, in the darkness, you can't even see. doesn't mean, there's a very famous theory, this uh, uh, Plato's cave. I think uh, some of you must have read it in your studies, that the prisoners are put in a cave and their perception is completely different. When they come out, the complete world opens to them and they are completely different. So you see, the perception of senses is very elusive. And therefore, the results of the scientific observation, which are based on sense perception, are not complete. That is very important part of it. The second important part is that uh, the science considers this universe as collection of objects. Like you have engine, for example, you have a car engine. You have 100 different parts, you put them together, the engine starts operating. They consider the whole universe like that. That there's a sun, there's a moon, there are stars, there's human being, there's plants, there are animals. You put them together, the universe starts functioning. That is how they look at uh, the universe. They look each component of the universe as, as a segregated existence. They don't consider it as one united thing. So that is another uh, problem with the scientific observations. Now, <laughs> I won't go, through. there are many, many things in, in this, uh, uh, the limitations of the science, but I won't go into all those details now. Now, what is the spirituality? As I define spirituality, spirituality is also like science. They also want to establish the, the, the truth. They also want to establish the reality. They enables you to establish the reality, the truth. Now, what is... Uh, the meaning of spirituality. The spirituality is actually a higher science, a science which is much higher than the normal science we see, which enables you to understand the power of the subtle and the insensible. These two words, subtle and the insensible, I'll explain to them what they mean with some examples. This, this spirituality is a science which opens this field to us to enable those powers and to understand the reality in a better way, which science cannot because science cannot understand those things. 
Now, what is, let me give you an example, what is subtle or what is uh, insensible. You, we all know that food is very important for us to sustain our body. If we don't eat food for some days, we are supposed to, we will die. It's very important. The food is sensible. You can touch it, you can smell it, you can see it, it's gross. Eh? It's, it's, but people can live without food for 30 days. Some people can live without food for 60 days. They're people. What about water? Water is more subtle than food. It's less gross than food. How many days can you live without water? Maybe five days, maybe seven days, maybe ten days maximum. Hmm? And what about air? Air is far more subtle. You don't see it. You don't touch it. You know, it touches you, but you don't touch it. You are inhaling, exhaling all the time, constantly. How many minutes can you live without air? Maybe ten minutes, five minutes, I don't know. Hmm? A few minutes. But as the existence becomes subtle, it becomes more powerful. Or the other way around, as the existence becomes more powerful, it becomes subtle. That is very, very important. Let me give you another example of a human body itself. Our body is very grace, uh, gross. It's a fantastic creation. It's the, it's the most miraculous machine in this universe. You know, we eat, what, juice, we take bread and we take... Uh, rice and it becomes what? Blood, flesh, inside the body. How it happens? Can you make it in laboratory? Any scientist can make it? It's impossible. You see how it happens inside the body. It's intelligent. And the best system of communication is inside the body. You touch it and immediately you feel this is a table, this, this is what it is, this wood. How you feel it? It's not only the uh, the instantness but also the refined way in the body operates. It's a very intelligent system. It keeps directing you. If you need energy, you, you feel hungry and you need to eat. It tells you now it's time to go to the toilet. It tells you it's time to try rest. It keeps guiding you, you see. It's fantastic creation. But remember, human body is the weakest part of the human constitution. The weakest. I'm emphasizing this word. This body is controlled. It's gross. Eh? It's controlled by your senses of action and perception. Imagine a person cannot see, cannot hear, cannot taste, <coughs> cannot touch. What is his body? It's like a vegetable. Right? It becomes like a vegetable. In the old days, this happens. People who uh, have, you know, loss of senses, they feel that way. So the senses control your body. The senses are much smaller, much more subtle than the body. I'm making the same point here. And then what about senses? Senses are the second weakest part of your body as I already mentioned about the limitations of senses, but senses are directly controlled by your mind. You see, you are listening to me not because of your ears, but because your mind is with me. Sometimes you sit in front of a TV for half an hour, you don't know what goes on there because your mind was in shopping plaza or in school or somewhere else. So your eyes were there, but not your mind. Sometimes you read a book and you don't know what you read because your mind was somewhere else. So it is the mind which sees, it's the mind which hears, it's the mind which smells, it's the mind which tastes. So the mind controls your senses. And where is mind? It has become more subtle. It has become almost insensible because sense organs cannot grasp the mind, you know. It controls the senses. So this is the power of, I don't want to go more detail. Now look at the power of sleep, for example. You are such a powerful person, we have great ego and great power and wealth and we are proud of it, when the sleep comes, you fall, all this body falls apart, you don't know what to do, you become, you collapse with it. Eh? And where does sleep come from? Can you see it? Can you smell it? It's very powerful. Hmm? You become almost, you know, dead in that sense. So this is the power of what you call insensible. Let me give you one or two more examples, one example of Time, for example. <clears throat> now, time, do you feel what is time? It is controlling everything in our life. This is time to eat, this is time to get up, this is time to attend classes, this is time to go and meet friends, this is time to talk to somebody, time to come for this talk. Eh? Everything is controlled by time. Hmm? Not only that, we helplessly grow with time. A fetus is formed, with time it grows. After birth, helplessly we grow with time. Can you stop that growth? Look at the power of the time. We grow. 
this insensible time you cannot see time you cannot touch time can you can you can you sense time no this insensible time defines every single sensible object in this life in this universe actually even the life of this building is defined by time the life of this table is defined by time the life of this microphone is designed by time and our life is also decided by time if i say i am 56 year old what is that mean is the time nothing but time look at the power of time power of the empty space now you see science you are some of your science students the science cannot define empty space empty space because empty space has no attributes you can define something which has size shape color you know uh, i'm 6 feet tall and my color is black and things like that you can define but things which has no attribute at all how do you define so the science cannot define it it defines that whatever exists between two physical objects is a space whatever exists between earth and the sun is a space for example that is how the time is uh, the space is defined and you see nothing in this it's empty it looks empty huh? it looks empty anything you can imagine in this universe it exists in this empty space anything you can imagine i'm giving this uh, i'll give you some examples to prove this to begin with we are breathing in and out we taking out carbon dioxide breathing in oxygen it exists in this space isn't it huh? there is humidity here if there is no humidity what happens there is water all over you put your clothes here they will dry and disappear here not only that you a 100 story building goes on fire it it troubles reduces into small rubber where does building go where does it disappear it disappears into this empty space hmm? you burn this wood where does it disappear into this empty space this world consumes at least 10 billion liters of fuel every day at least you take cars and factories and put where does this disappear where does it go goes into this space not only that all the sounds which you hear you put 100 cell phones here each phone gets its separate sound how there's something in this system which enables it to happen you get wireless internet here all the data are existing here that's how you get them otherwise how can you get them though we have devised the systems now to receive it but it existed all the time there are many many examples so this is the power of insensible which we must understand and that is what the spirituality tells us consciousness time and space are still conceivable by us we can still conceive but consciousness is beyond conception i'll answer the questions later yeah now consciousness is far more subtle than time and space and now what is the meaning of consciousness i tell you there are theories which say that uh, human being is made of what you call carbon protein and then the life originate the cells originate and then uh, the single cells multiply and they become multi cell organs and then they they organize themselves and they, you know the you know the charles darwin's uh, uh, theory of evolution and many others that's how the science defines the life now i'm not going into that i'm asking you a very simple straight forward question this is a stone can it create anything can it create anything this table can it create anything hmm this is a piece of iron can it create anything hmm no nothing can be created without consciousness we have consciousness so we can think and we can create i want to create a glass for example the thought comes in your mind how to hold the water how to create then you devise method you collect the raw material you establish a factory and you create it the stock has to be organized somebody has to think the thought comes in the mind first then you organize this whole thing physically so everything originates from consciousness from the consciousness you can create what you call physical objects but from physical objects you cannot create consciousness this is a common sense question 
if we can create from stone something why not but it is impossible but from the human mind we can create as the consciousness increases the creation becomes superior like animals also have consciousness they can create things but lower level human mind is far more developed so they can create more things so for any creation consciousness is a must and that is what spirituality explains that creation started with consciousness whatever name you give it doesn't matter its name you can call christ or allah or ram or krishna or universal consciousness or brahm doesn't matter but the fact is that creation starts with consciousness now this is the theory of evolution we are talking about now we have great scientists here till today with all the great inventories and uh, laboratories and observations we can't even tell till now in the scientific way whether the egg was born first or chicken was born first or whether a man was born first or woman was is a simple you can't even answer this question how can you answer other questions so this is where the modern science lacks in answering these things these are the now i don't want to go into this but here i want to say right now is that the spiritual power enables you to understand what is subtle what is insensible what is consciousness and that allows you to understand the reality of this universe in totality because physical world exist on one side but there is another world which exist which we do not realize normally because we are obsessed with the physical world all the time and that is where the modern science is a mistake so i will stop on this topic here and i will be happy to answer question either now or later later